How did it hit you? Uh, in a ventilator or nothing much? <laughs> Zero symptoms. I would have never known I had COVID if I didn't test. Really? Nothing. So you're an elite athlete? <laughs> I don't know either that or my body's got so much bad stuff in it, just rejected it all. <laughs> no, it just it was uh, it was a complete surprise to me yeah. that uh, I tested positive. Dave, you were obviously one of the first guys uh, on the team and around the team to to get it, and then you, you watched in the week ahead as mm -hmm. a lot of guys did. What, what was kind of as you're watching and trying to support the team? What was kind of the, the mindset? Oh, you're watching around the whole league. Obviously, yeah. there's something something different going on. So it's. Uh, Concerning for everybody, but it's as I talked to our guys one by one, nobody was really sick. So it's you know you're you're trying to understand what's going on and making sure everybody's all right. But on the other side of it, you're going like this is uh, we got a lot of people sitting here that are I guess you can't say they're healthy, but they're asymptomatic, and I felt like I was sitting there twiddling my thumbs, watching a lot of video. And, Felt like you could be doing a lot more, but that's the way it is right now. How did, how did you support the coaching staff and, and whatnot during that? During we were in contact all the time and then did a lot of the video work that uh, the pre scout stuff and everything I did just like normal and sent it. Brian Wiseman did that, uh, presented to the players, and Gully and Jim both did the special team still. And uh, we talked, and we, obviously, before every practice, before every game, between periods, we talked. So it's. You're in close contact. You're just not there. How hard was it to game plan when you weren't really sure who was going to be in the, in the line? Yeah. Well, that, that last Seattle game, we were there was a lot of conversation that okay, that's good, we're set, and then there'd be a phone call five minutes later. Okay, here's the next uh, version of it. So, lots of uh, you know, lots in and out, and, and every team is going through it right now, almost. You know, so you uh, just have to read and react. And if you let it get you down, then it'll get you down. If you if you say it, it is what it is. You just got to deal with it and, and uh, make sure you make the best of things and, and go out and do your job. Then I think it's not a positive, but you, you can't let it push you the other way. You got to keep pushing forward. So you're down, down two, you're down two nothing in that game. You're down five forwards. Was that the best your team's play from the, the, the point that they got down? And just they just stuck with it. We had lots of we had lots of energy. As, you know, a little concerned that first goal goes in, and now you're a little concerned, but. We, uh, I felt like our group had lots of energy pushing, and uh, I think it, it was it's probably good being on the road and kind of, uh, you know, taken back a little bit with Jesse coming out, and it, it uh, you know, guys really dug in. It's like the wounded dog, you know, theory that, that you jump in, everybody wanted to make sure they did their part and played very well. So the uncertainty that you guys are dealing with, it's supposed to be gone on this road. So what have you been told about what you're going to play and what's not? Just, uh, it's day to day, you know, where I feel sorry for Kate, <laughs> just trying to arrange things. But it's, uh, I think, you know, in talking to the doctors and that, we'll get through the next day or two here and we'll get through the tests and just see where we are with everything, not just with us, but around the league and everything that'll probably determine when you get up and going. The guys had, you know, the guys here today had great energy and excited to get back and going, but it's, there is a little bit of a question mark when, when things will get going. Especially with the border crossing, I mean, you could conceivably leave a guy behind in the States for yeah. however long it takes. That's uh, talking to some people down in, uh, some friends of mine down in Arizona and other sports there, they're, that's the main factor we have. I mean, down there you've got some sports that are, they're not testing as much. You know, if you get symptoms, you get a test, but um, the border is, uh, is the critical thing for us. To go on and come on both sides is the test you got to have and, and whether you're leaving people behind or what's going on there. So that's uh, that's a big factor in what we're doing. I was going to ask, like, how are the others going and who the hell knows? It's been so long since you've done anything, like practiced or played or, yeah. or anything. The state of the team now is kind of... Well, uh, like I say, I got back. I mean, obviously, I'm happy to be back today, but our guys seem like they're really happy to be back too. Just good spirits and lots of energy on the ice, and that's a good sign. And we talked a little bit about today. We, you can... Look at it as a downer. You can just say, "Hey, we're going to be, we're going to work through it." And the attitudes today were excellent, so that's that's uh, a positive coming out of it. Any uh, chance you might get a, a body or two back from from protocol before the next game? Should it be played, of course. Uh, the only guy I think that would be eligible to come back if he gets through some tests would be Duncan Keith, and then uh, Nurse and Jesse and Lagason are all, I believe, the thirty-first. 
and then uh, uh, who else after that? Cassian would be after that. So uh, we'll see what happens today. So as far as you know, no one got really sick, right? It was all no, yeah. nobody. nobody Hyman's ready to Hyman looks ready. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he went through a full practice today. He was uh, felt good about it. So Mike Smith. Uh, full practice again today. We'll see. He's it's. This part is good for him to have two or three practices to ramp up, and if he can get through all three of these, hopefully he's close to playing. Yeah, or, you guys got uh, Derek Ryan uh, lead the stretches at the end of practice. Of course, you've yeah. some years here at the U of A. How cool of a story is it uh, to have Derek Ryan's uh, hockey career come full circle here? Well, it's, it's, I think the guys were giving it to him a little bit. They felt like he built the rink here, even though it's been here a long time. <laughs> Stoff, Stoff built it, really, but... You know, <laughs> No, it's uh, it's always fun to go back, and guys recognize that, and you know it's great that the players know each other's history, know what's going on. We've got some people on our staff too that have, have been here, so lots of history in this rink, and uh, it's you know it's enjoyable to come and practice places. Like it gives you the gives you the feeling what the game has really been all about for a long time. Is that you one know? of the most unique hockey careers you've ever experienced? What's that? Is that one of the most unique hockey careers you've experienced? Going from playing in CIS. Well, there's been a few guys do it, but you know, very few that have been as successful as he has. So it's great to see. All right, thanks, guys.